Welcome to Window Shopping with Car and Driver. This is our 19th episode. And every summer in Michigan, there is a show called The Orphan Car Show, where dead brands and brands that are no longer sold in the United States are all, all go to the show. Um, the show is probably not going to be happening this year. Um, so we decided to find dead brands, dead brands in the U.S., defunct brands, uh, so-called orphan brands, and set ourselves a $5,000 budget and went searching. So... Um, Let's see, uh, today we're joined by Jonathan Ramsey, Drew Dorian, Casey Colwell, and Joey Caparella. And Joey, you're gonna take it away, right? Yep. All right. So my first car is a very dead brand. This is a Sterling. Wow. And I really like Sterling because it was such a mishmash. Um, Sterling was a brand set up in America by Rover, which is a British car company, but it actually was a, collaboration as well with Honda. So this is the Sterling 827. Ooh, that's a actually, big one. Yeah, this is a 1991. And this car actually shared a lot with the original Acura Legend. So nice. Yeah, it, I actually think it's aged pretty well. Maybe not so much inside, but at least outside. Oh, yeah. It's very kind of like wood grain, old school leather. Trying, I think it's like trying to be British without really truly being British. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, that was the Rover 800 in Europe. Yeah, these are like very classic Honda gauges. A guy um, used to pick me up from, for, for morning hockey in one of these. And wow. then um, after high school, somebody with an Acura Legend would give me a ride home. <laughs> <laughs> I always found that funny. You really completed oh, the set. Joey, a friend of mine's dad in high school inexplicably bought a like one or two year old Sterling. And I remember it, it was, I think it was white had uh, silver, or I mean, sorry, it was white and it had wire wheels and the car was just utter trash. Like it never stopped breaking down. It never stopped stranding him. So somehow the Brits took this Honda powertrain and completely parked it up and made it unreliable and terrible. Yeah, how did they manage to do that? Such I a don't know. At the time, Rover was working with Honda and building Hondas as the, I forget what they called it. They built the the Civic in England as like the Rover 200 or something. I can't remember what it was. They still do have, I think it's the same factory that they build the Type R in now, the Honda factory. But or, yeah, Rover, Rover burned, Rover Honda burned had, through them. Rover burned through Honda and then it burned through BMW. It burned through, I think, uh, yeah, Ford, didn't Ford, didn't Ford buy into them, into their nonsense? Well, no, I thought B, BMW bought it to take over Range Rover. That's and right. Um, Ford took over Land Rover, right? right. Yeah. Yeah, I can tell that these are unreliable because this these cars, so this car is at, um, this is a, a guy in New York who has a bunch of Sterling. All of them. Care of them. <laughs> They're like yeah. horses and Fieros. You just have to have several. <laughs> exactly. Fastback one. Yeah, I had forgotten that there was this like hatchback. Yeah. That's hot. Yeah, there's there were a couple others that sold recently. I'm really curious who uh, who's. And so wait a minute. So this guy is the Sterling fixer, like that yeah. is his. Yeah. Here's wow. a hatchback no reality thing. show. I'd watch that. I would totally. Oh, that one's a manual. Cool. Yeah, manual hatchback. Casey, do you remember at the old office there was a green Sterling, and in the back seat was a. Uh, service manual, like a how to fix, the, and it was like this huge binder that just sat in the back seat. Yeah, and and the car never moved. Never. <laughs> yeah, they're really strange cars. This one's forty five hundred. It's got one hundred seventeen thousand miles, and it says it's one owner. Wow. Wow. Now, just out of is this any is this any relation to like the Sterling? Uh, uh, like, are they rebadged uh, Benzes? Are they rebadged no. like? Uh, no, 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 the, 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 the box fans, the uh, sprinters. The what? Oh, oh that? No, I, I don't know how that name came about, Casey. You're, you're thinking of the, Casey, I think you're thinking of the Class 8 trucks. There's a Sterling Class 8 tractor. Yeah, there's, yes, and then there's also, but there's also, re, there's, there's, because Sterling and Freightliner exactly. both have, have uh, rebadged. Sprinters, um, right? Spr yeah. Sprinters or whatever, or maybe the Fords of Sterling. I don't know, but yeah, no but relation. That's nothing, that's nothing to do with this. Yeah. yeah, they created they created the Sterling brand because Rover, the Rover brand, had so much you know 
shame in the U.S. because it was it was such a tar it was such a tarnished brand. And then the they created brand. Sterling. They created Sterling to fool us, and it didn't work. It didn't work collaboration. So this is a Mercure. Yeah. Mercure. We we were just discussing the pronunciation. I'm not sure what's correct. Mercure. Mercure. I think it's Mercure. It's German for Mercury. It's ger it's the German yeah. word for Mercury. I always thought it was Mercure. It's Mercure is my understanding. Um, but this is the Mercure? Scorpio, which we was should ask Scorpio. Bob Lutz, Casey. We need Bob Lutz brought Mercure into the uh, U.S. to mm. give Ford sort of some European flavor. You know, it's these are Fords of Europe. This is the Ford Scorpio in Europe. Yeah. Yeah, there was also the XR4TI, which was like a, I think a lot cooler. But I was going best for, winning XR4TI. Yeah, I was going for more of like a norm core sedan vibe, so that's why I found this. <laughs> Joey, I have to admit to you, I not only saw this listing, but I have often, well, not often, but I have searched for manual transmission Scorpios. <laughs> Are, they must be rare. <laughs> They're very rare. This one is not a manual, unfortunately. Yeah, all the ones, all the ones that came to the states were really high spec. They had the two point nine liter Cologne V six. It was like the top of the line car in yeah Ford's top of the line sedan in uh, in Europe. That this one was terrible. Well. What's that, Jonathan? That has not aged well. No, not at all. At least not. I this think one. I think he should relist it. Under Caparella's Normcore, what do you call it? Normcore what sedan? Normcore sedan. There was a there's a third word in there. I think he should relist it under that, and it would sell. He could double the price and sell it immediately. Yeah. Oh my God, he's got a Chrysler uh, two yeah. convertible behind it. Yeah. This car sign. This this is like my. Uh, if there was only somebody from the office that drove a, a Scorpio. <laughs> yeah, the Scorpio is not 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 terrific. Mm. The one that came after this is really hideous and completely killed Scorpio. Oh, yeah, I've seen Scorpio on the brand. Like, uh, like in 2001 or something? Yeah, this yeah there one it is. is. Oh. Terrible. So terrible. Oh, yeah. that, that, that is a beauty. I mean, oh, what God. were they thinking? Listen, you guys, it's not going to come to as any shock to you, but I love it. <laughs> <laughs> I have nothing to say to that. It, it doesn't look, come as a shock to me, Drew. Thank you. I love that even like there's like one dynamic shot here, and that's definitely static, but it's set up to look dynamic. <laughs> look at the rear end. Make that rear end shot bigger. Hmm. It is like just a, bizarre. You can coop or something, but worse. But these were these don't look far off early infinities, rounded like early two thousands infinities, yeah. rounded or bought, or an early GS. <laughs> what? I was, no, I said an early GS. That was, He's just throwing shade. Tro I'm trolling. I'm trolling Joey. It's fine. Okay, my third car. My third car. I want you guys to guess because I wonder if you'll get it. Maybe you'll get it quickly. So, it's that 2000 or what year is it? Uh, two, it's it, from the 2000s. It's a mainstream sedan and it has an inline six. It's not luxury. Oh, it's a Suzuki. Um, what did they call that? What was the Suzuki? The Suzuki Verona. Yes, there Verona. Yes, damn it. Wow. I can't believe you got it on like the first try. That took you. Me said in, yeah, no, you said in line six. And line that six. Do it. In line six. Easy. So I always thought these were weird. I mean, it was Even actually, the ad says it's a four cylinder. Yeah, the ad is wrong. It's an in line six, 2.5 liter. It's actually, this is another kind of mishmash. So this is when Suzuki yeah. is owned by GM. And it's actually a Daewoo. The Daewoo Laganza. Yeah. The Daewoo, it, it's not the Laganza, it's the, the successor to the Laganza. Um, which oh, I can't what was remember. what was the big sedan called? The Laganza was the one sold in the U.S., but the one um, the this is the successor to the. Laganza. Oh, this is the refresh. I see. I see what you're it's saying. It's called the. Uh, <laughs> I just looked this up and I've totally forgotten. But it had the Laganza's engine. That's what they had that inline six. Daewoo that, Magnus. That Daewoo oh yeah, the Magnus. Yeah. Uh, well, anyway, Daewoo was gone in the U.S. by this point, so they sold it to Suzuki. It was supposed to be like a Camry or a Cord rival, but it totally failed. I love the six cylinder because I feel like it was advertised as six cylinder power with four cylinder fuel economy, but it was actually the opposite. <laughs> it was six cylinder fuel economy with four cylinder power. <laughs> I think slow. Porsche did some development work on that engine in the 90s for Daewoo. Yeah, they did. Not wow. their best work, I would say. <laughs> <laughs> Joey, I got to tell you, this is kind of bonus because you have two orphan brands in one car. <laughs> Daewoo and Suzuki. Yeah, that's <laughs> true. That's what I was going for. That's pretty great.
This one's nice too. I mean, I wouldn't buy it, but it's not bad. It looks clean. And it's yeah. really cheap. Twenty eight ninety. It's got 160,000 miles, though. Yeah, but it's so old. That's not bad for the year. It's got a new water pump. <laughs> <laughs> not much to say about it. Let's see. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Joey. I like that double. That, that Daewoo Suzuki double orphan combo is strong. <laughs> All right. Uh, Jonathan. You want to uh, show us um, what you found on the uh, internet? So I'm going to start with the 1984, not the car, uh, the Triumph TR6, because I loved this car when I spent a year in Indiana. Wow. And it was all over everywhere because of Tears for Fears. Everybody wants to rule the world. This uh, was the car in the video, and uh, I've never gotten over it. And there was a guy who had one on bricks, but he wanted eight grand for it at the time. Uh, and I was in the ninth grade, and I was a little beyond my means. Um, <laughs> and this, like, with a few thousand more bucks, you are in a Tears for Fears video. And the seats, the seats must be new, but the rest of it looks all right until you get to the uh the back end where there's a few holes oh yikes yeah. yeah that's, that's the, the problem with these they just rust like crazy yeah 2.5 liter straight six 103 horsepower oh, is it no. the engine from the suzuki verona or no <laughs> <laughs> that's um something like that or maybe a, an earlier rover the one let me cam tail like i think the the body looks good it had a lucas it has, a, it has a, an optional overdrive in third and fourth gears. It had one on second, but they kept blowing up. Uh, oh, did so, it have the push button overdrive? Yeah, it was an option. Um, and the other ones outside of America were carbureted, so they got 150 horsepower, I think. But in the US, no, I'm sorry, fuel injected. Lucas made fuel injectors for uh, overseas cars. Uh, so they were 150 horsepower. But, and the guy wants, you know, 3,400. Not bad. Oh. What's that? I said it's not bad. Just needs a little bit of work. Well, How did um, something in California rust that much? It must have not lived in yeah, California. Yeah, it must not have lived there. No. Well, I mean, and, but I mean, it, it's a triumph. <laughs> like, if you breathe on it, rust is oxidized. So yeah, they rusted in the showroom. Oh, my but God. Why? You no, know I love a deal. Wow. You know I love a deal. <laughs> Six for the guy. Six this might be the least expensive car ever. Oh, but you should just save this one for a lemons. I can go to the dealer. I can get. A, I can finance this. I can get a four-year no interest loan. Okay. And my car payment's like twelve dollars a month. <laughs> what this no, cover car? Oh, that'd be so great to finance six hundred and fifty dollars. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm just saying. Yeah, it could and. Five speed. Oh yes. Yes. Awesome. Clean. Like saves it. One point nine liter, one hundred horsepower. Crank windows. How many miles are on it, Jonathan? Um. Hey, that's a good question. Um. Taking the wheel covers puts you in the um the blacked out wheel trim. Uh, wow, that's a lot. Of miles. That's a lot. Somebody drove that thing a long, long way. Why wouldn't you? It was a different kind of car, a different kind of car company. <laughs> Can we look at the interior again? It has that horrible, horrible uh, Saturn with the two Air, airbags interior. I don't think horrible means what you think it means, if that's how you're using it. <laughs> because <laughs> Keep going. Because this car is awesome. <laughs> and hold on, where are we looking? We need to go back. Oh, this and it had the odometer. A lot of photo. This is the most photographed Saturn in history. <laughs> <laughs> and it had the odometer that made all the noise that they had to get rid of this same year because people were complaining. Yeah, that that airbag, the passenger airbag, is not attractive. <laughs> um, the eighteen-inch stick shift. I mean, black steelies. Where where else are you going to go for that? That's incredible. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that airbag, the lip on the airbag looks like a, a belly hanging over like a belt. <laughs> it's a muffin top. 
Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm not going to be able to unsee that. I hate this car. <laughs> now, Jonathan, this one doesn't have any visible rust because of the plastic body panels. There you go. That's, it'll last you yeah. forever. You will, you will give this car to your grandchild. I think you're lucky. You're going to be lucky to get a thumbs up on either of these bad boys. <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> it's early days yet. We got time. <laughs> All right, thanks, Jonathan. Uh, Casey, oh, let me mm -hmm. see her up next. If I All right. stop sharing, there we go. So, as uh, as we were as we were going through there, I kind of had to call an audible because I I'd found a car and then I had forgotten about it, but then I um I quickly found it again. So uh... wait, nope, that's not it. Whoa. Because I was going to do that. It's 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 this one's. Well, oh, forget it. Never mind. I had found a GTO that was uh, that was under five grand, but um, uh, anyway, Datsun uh, 300ZX. Now Tony and I already discussed this whether or not this was considered a uh, an orphan because they just changed the name and kept going and moving on. Um, I think it is. But uh, well, they also just brought back the Datsun brand for like. But they, yeah, they just killed it again. Just killed it. They literally just oh, killed you're it. Again. Right, they brought it back. Um, but this is also, but I mean, the, um, I mean, is this the one that is this the one that talked to you? Or was that only the Maxima? I don't know. I, I don't know if this. Maxima. Yeah, the Maxima actually had a little record player that would play the different stuff. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Yeah. That was the tech back then to get your car to talk to you. Tech. The tech. Uh, but, you know, T-tops and, and uh, uh, I mean, they were not quick at all. These were like like mid-9 to 60 and, um, you know. This is the first year of the 3-liter V6 that they continue to go with, I think, in some way. I think it dates all the way back to this car. The VQ, yeah. Yeah, or, this yeah is like VQ. The, I think yeah. this is the first VQ, yeah. Wow, really? And, um, you know, but uh, it's a it's a fun little sports car. It's a manual. It would um, oh you could show it. You could take it to a car show, and it would be appreciated. I liked um, that the uh, let me find the. I, I liked that the. Uh, let me see it. My somebody car. has the uh, the tape adapter, and like this had and all. You know that's still original, and somebody didn't screw that up with a um, with a singled in radio in there. Was this the year that they badged it both a Nissan and a Datsun and simultaneously? Uh, yeah, I was getting to that one. Um, bingo! Datsun, <laughs> Nissan. Yeah. Um, so, a little confusing. I'm I'm sticking with the ad as it as it's saying it's a Datsun. I'm guessing that's what it says on. Yeah. On the. Uh, whatever. What's the on the title? But uh, multiple personalities. Yeah. <laughs> Now, um, I know that we are going to call it an orphan, but would the orphan car show call it an orphan? Like, could you take this down to the park and show it on that? Day? You can convince them it's a Datsun. Yeah. <laughs> Let me just pry that badge off and we're good. Um, in the mid 80s, in the mid 80s, on the left. In the mid 80s, in the magazine, they wrote about some survey. They had surveyed Americans about the Nissan name and the Datsun name, and people had already realized, like, okay, Nissan, Nissan caught on faster than people than the than the survey people expected. So the comment in the magazine was they didn't expect it to happen that soon. <laughs> on on um, but in in my research, um, I uh, just love we'll, this. We'll edit that out. <laughs> edit what out? <laughs> no, keep going, Look, Casey. Keep going. Don't stop. <laughs> Wait, what did I do? No, oh, you didn't, you didn't I, I the you doing the right thing. <laughs> oh. Um, anyway, but no, in the research, I found this great, like, it just kind of looks like a Who album cover of uh, the participants in this giant, uh, it was like a seven, seven car sports car comparison test. Who's all in there? Anybody that we currently... That's Don Sherman, that's David E. and Chubba. And I, Rich, I think this is Rich here. That might be Rich, yeah. I think this is Rich That's here. That's Bedard. And... That's Bedard next to Chubba. All right. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. So what, did, what did the yeah. magazine call it? Did we call it a Datsun? So let's not talk about that. What? Um, <laughs> <laughs> I think that answers it. 
Um, yeah, we definitely we definitely called it a Nissan um, like before because like the official change was what eighty six I think. I don't know. Um, but that, yeah, but we we document. were calling it a Nissan um, at least at this point. We're early adopters. Um, uh, I could not find the comparison test winner, the uh, the uh, the Audi Audi Coupe. The All right, next car. Anyway, um, and then uh, uh, next car is a, and this is one that I, I we may have even featured this exact. Wait, I think car. we did this on the yeah. overlanding one. I remember. Was this the exact guy. car? It was the guy. Yeah. Well, it 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 clearly. Um, it deserves another mention. It deserves it another mention. It kind of. Uh, hold on, I gotta move this so I can. How much is that? One? It's like thirty five hundred bucks. Well, they haven't sold it yet. Um, and uh, yeah, you know, and and they're cool. They what are. What can cool. I say? I mean, it's it's. Uh, I did some more research. So this was like the first uh, Borg Warner uh, torque on demand, the transfer case. Can you go back uh, to that bumper, the the front bumper shot? It looked. There's two. Was that a a grill, a brush guard they had installed. Oh yeah, that they. Oh yeah, out. yeah, yeah. They had a, yeah, they had a uh, cow catcher. What do you call them? Yeah. Or it hit, it hit a really low picket fence or something. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or it had to get towed and like the strap, like under tension, snapped right, up or right. something. But... Oh, it definitely had to get towed. <laughs> hey, 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 hey. Um, but uh, but no, this was the first. This was uh one of the first examples of the of the of the torque on demand. That's cool. uh, the Borg Warner transfer case that's now in like every pickup truck. So basically, when you click this four wheel drive auto button, it would engage the front hubs, and then and then a, a clutch in the um, in the transfer case would um, would kick on when when needed. Um, so it was you know you had a you had your transfer case shifter here, but it was really most of it was electronic on the inside, so you could run it in strictly two wheel drive. That's cool. Um, that's but I, I question, I was, you know, so it's, it's under budget a bit, but these, uh, these uh, Mesa tires. Um, I think those are rodeo wheels, too. Those aren't trooper wheels. They didn't put that wheel on the trooper. Oh, right. I think it's got the dual overhead cam version of the engine. Yeah. Yep. So it says. Yeah. You, wouldn't, you wouldn't notice when you're driving yeah. it, but. Um, but yeah, then, yeah, so I read all about that. And, in the April uh, 1998 issue. Um, What's where, it 360? Is, Where's the, let's see the spec page. It's, it happens. I mean, the, the, Nine and a half. the 300 Nine ZX is a little bit quicker, but not much. <laughs> um, and, uh, but this is, this is also like the, the first um, road test that was done after the whole consumer reports. Um, you know, uh, petition recall fiasco that, uh, you know, that, that Azusa went through and, you know, yeah, and Frank, with the SLX, which was, yeah. 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 And Frank went on to be like, yeah, they took our advice and, you know, improved, uh, the four wheel drive system and stuff, but didn't necessarily make it look a lot better, but, uh, I yeah, think so. it's good. Yeah, I, I like the way it looks. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's aged well. That's for sure. Yeah. All right, Casey. Yeah. So that's it. That I'm done. All right. Uh, let's see. Thanks for, thanks for finding the car, Jonathan. <laughs> My pleasure. <laughs> Mr. Dorian. All right. I've got a couple of things to show you guys. So I want to start off with what I think is my favorite one that I found. And that's this Saab 93. I almost, I almost picked Please. this car. <laughs> Those wheels are great. That is great. Yeah, yeah it's really find, pretty. You can find these a lot for the budget. So, like, you know, if you wanted a different color, you could probably find it. But I like this one because it's got these cool wheels. A lot of them have the smaller wheel, and the design isn't quite as nice. Plus, this one, even though it has 146,000 miles on it, looks like it's been like really well kept. Um, let's see. Yeah, wasn't that like the what was the what was the high performance sobs? What were they called? Vigan. 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 Yeah, wasn't that a, like the Vigan wheel? This uh, it might. Know. This one isn't a Vigan. This one's just. Yeah. Uh, I but the down Vigan, here, I thought the Vigan had five spokes. Case. Appearance Maybe. Vigan was different. This has the sport appearance package with seventeen inch wheels, apparently. Mm. But it's got a manual, so Ooh. Tony can't blast me for going with an automatic. 
<laughs> um, well, I've gone automatic so much in the re uh, recently. I can't really blast anybody. Yeah. But doesn't this look like it's been really well kept? It's good. It's cool. It's yeah. really cool. Yeah, they were a bunch of they were a bunch of sobs. Um, night panel. That's the best feature in any. Night panel's awesome. Which what night panel? I don't know if there's a shot of it. Yeah. Oh yeah. It, is. it it blocks out all the gauges except the speedometer. Like a fighter jet. So this is a three owner vehicle, but I kind of feel like these get passed around a lot because they're not really like practical daily drivers. You know, it's more like a Sunday nice day let's go for a cruise kind of thing right why isn't, why isn't it a good daily driver well i mean the trunk's not real big and you know the rear seat's not very big so like if you if you're hauling people or kids or or things you know it's not you know a practical car but um i would i would drive this daily i used to you know daily drive a fiat 500 so this is large to me there are a lot of fiat 500s in that parking lot go I back know, I see see that. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah so this is my this is my First pick. My second like pick, I'm looking for something that's maybe a little more practical. I found a <laughs> <laughs> Wow. Yeah. It's like perfect old lady gold. Florida. <laughs> they, didn't even, they didn't even take it out of the I garage. I think that car probably started silver though. <laughs> <laughs> so it doesn't need a whole lot. It's only got 83,000 miles on it. And this one actually does say it was owned by an elderly woman. So, <laughs> wait, I'm not remembering that. Out of the garage, it's, I hate that. Another collaboration where it's a, it's really a Mitsubishi. Right. What do you hate about the garage? It's just they didn't move the car out of the garage. Oh. And shoot it. Yeah. <laughs> I don't have that much time. Look, Tony, you know what you're getting with this car. Is you need <laughs> to see more of it? Look at where that oh, seat you. is positioned. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that tells you all you need to know. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> These were like really kind of weird van hatchback things where there's a, a sliding door here, but there's not one on the other side. Um, and yeah. It's only a three. I am not remembering this car at all. The Colt Vista? Uh, it was the Mitsubishi. Not at all. Expo. This. What's that, Drew? The Mitsubishi Expo. Yeah. There was also an right. Eagle and Summit there was wagon. Expo, and then the big one was the Expo LRV. There was also an Eagle Summit wagon. Yeah. I found one of those in Florida, but I didn't. Choose it. <laughs> oh, okay, so this is like this is like precursor to the to the Veloster, basically. Yeah. This is the inspiration. But it's more of a van. It doesn't have the door. It's just yeah. a, oh, it's more like a van, Casey. It's like an. I know, but it, oh, like yeah, because I guess minivans back then only had three the minivans. They didn't have two doors. They yeah, they hadn't invented that yet. And that's the longer the one. one. I think that's an Expo LRV. Yeah, that had that did not have sliding doors. Yeah. Right. Look at it's this. Sort of, these yeah. are all sort of like precursors to the PT Cruiser, like high roof, sort of vanish. It's just yeah. the PT Cruiser looked kind of cool, or people thought it looked cool, so they bought it. Yeah. Hmm. The other successor to this was the Kia Rondo and the Mazda 5 with like tiny little vans. That's right. Mazda 5s were cool. They're still cool. Yeah. I was su actually surprised to see this on cars.com because I have looked for these in the past or the other variations. Um, Why? It's Drew's been, Drew's been interested in these. Oh, yeah. um, but they don't come on there very often. I don't think they were very pop. Maybe they weren't very popular, or like there's just not a lot of survivors. But this one's a survivor, so. Well, I yeah. would think that most people post these things on Craigslist that they're not even going to bother moving it out of the garage. Yeah, but Joey has looked for me on Craigslist using all of his Craigslist magic, and we still don't see them that often. I found an Eagle Summit wagon though, and I I think that's probably even more rare. Yeah. I, I think so just to be clear, just to be clear, you're actively looking to purchase one. No. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but I like to find cars that I'm like, oh, I wonder whatever happened to the Plymouth Pole Vista. Let me see how much they are, and then I look. Gotcha. Now we know. I really need to get a hobby. Is what I. I was going to say for 1900. I bet. I bet you could walk away with this thing for like a much less than that. <laughs> Next <laughs> car, Florida. All right, so for my next car, I have something that's a, even a little more practical still, but from the same family, and it's a Plymouth Grand Voyager Expresso. I, I hate that car. <laughs> Does that have winter tires? I think so, yeah. That's pretty knobby. I hate this car. <laughs> Tony calls, can I say what you call this car? It's the official car of Ypsilanti. <laughs> Hey, that's where I live. <laughs> I when right I lived, when I drew, when I lived in Michigan, when I lived in Ann Arbor, these were 
everywhere. <laughs> they, well, and when our office was like basically in Ypsilanti, they were, I mean, you'd, you'd pull out of the office and you'd see three of them before you got to the highway. Oh God, they're everywhere. This one's really clean. Espresso is the best trim level name because it's basically just how Americans mispronounce espresso. <laughs> <laughs> put, on, put on the side of your car. <laughs> It's low mileage. These are pretty yeah, indestructible too. Miles. It's, it looks like it's been really well kept. It, did, did have painted, it didn't have painted bumpers. How nope. is that a high trim spec? No, it's not a high trim spec. It's like a special. Oh, okay. And Plymouth didn't have any high trim specs. Like Plymouth was always the cheaper ones. That's right. So the Espresso was just, it had like the badge and that was about it. When I was a kid, we used to call these jelly bean bands. Because they are always they are always brightly colored, um, they they look like a bean, you know. So we call these jelly beans. This has like infamous, infamously terrible headlights too. Because Chrysler went to that really slim, small headlight, and they are just trash. Yeah, and it's still like an, basically an incandescent. It couldn't. It just it didn't yeah. produce enough light. Yeah, well, it's, maybe, it's, you could move a lot of contraband with this. That's and they a, were all green at night. It's a daytime. Get away, van. Why were they all green? I hate this. I, I used to see a lot of that, that light purple color. That's yeah, probably why we call them purple ones. that purple color. Drew, I hate this so much. Well, then <laughs> don't buy it. <laughs> right. I don't think anybody's buying this. You found a great example of my one of my least favorite vehicles. <laughs> so anyway, that's my selection. I'm gonna. I'm. I think I like my Saab best. So. Yeah, but you found some pretty crazy stuff. Thank you, Drew. So I found a Renault Alliance GTA wow. convertible, Show which, us. Is, which is the Alliance. Tony, the Tony. Yeah. you can't see it. Yeah. Can't? Can you see it now? No, oh. you're sharing the wrong screen. All right. You're pearly in us. I totally <laughs> pearly you. So I'm sorry about that. What was I sharing? Did you guys see that? Yeah. Wow. <laughs> What's wrong? I can't Renault get it up. Alliance GTA convertible. It's like that phrase gets worse and worse the more you go along. <laughs> I, I completely disagree. Uh, this is the high performance uh, Renault Alliance. The Renault Alliance was the US built one. In, in Europe, it was called the Renault 9. Um, but yeah, they built them in Kenosha, they Wisconsin. Did I didn't even know they did a convertible of this. Yeah, this was the mashup of AMC and Renault, and then they AMC had a factory in Wisconsin, so they built the Alliance there. Yeah, and they built the convertible. Um, I think it, it went from a five-seater to a four-seater, power top. Uh, the two-liter in the GTA was, I think- That had a power top? Yeah. <laughs> That's Why? Awesome. Luxury. Thank you, Drew. <laughs> Come on, that, that car that car looks like it was in an 8-bit video game for a Commodore Amiga. Yes. <laughs> it almost looks like it has fender flares. It's got the, the GTA is that cool body kit. It came with 15-inch wheels. It could pull 0.85G on the skid pad. Cool. Yeah, you've now used the words high performance, cool, and luxury to describe this car. <laughs> and all of them apply. I don't see the problem. Do you guys, do you guys uh, recognize these seats? No. These are the seats that were in the uh, early yeah. GTAs. Oh, uh, because they yeah. really? Yeah, because they yeah. were the AMC owned Jeep at the time and they put these seats in. Wow. Yeah, the GTA has this cool steering wheel. It's Stop got saying full, cool. full gauge package. It's a cool gauge package. <laughs> What's that cool cassette that's on the, uh, on the dash? Have you ID'd that? I don't know. I wish there were more photos. Oh, yeah. Look at that. Yeah, you can keep your cassettes here. And that jewel case. All right. Okay. I, I, I hear you guys. You don't really like my GTA. Yeah, I reminds like me. This is like, this is like a, it reminds me not, uh, never mind. Well, kind of like a Mercury Capri. Like, it looks so small and. Uh, yeah. Ooh. Proportions are closer, I also Yeah. Mercury Capris. Yeah, the, wind, the windshield is crazy high. If you look at one of these in profile, <laughs> the windshield is like, long. let me see if this guy, this is oh, wow. that <laughs> Yeah, look at it with the top up. Isn't, yeah. that, isn't that hot? Oh, like the door. top half of the car is taller than the bottom half. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's yeah. Terrible. It looks that's a little dorky right. with the top up, I, I gotta that's, say. Joey, that's how you know it's French. <laughs> Fair enough. 
All right. So that's uh, how much do they want for this? I forget. Twenty five hundred. I'm well under budget. You could buy two of them. So my next car, I was. I'm with KC. I found a. I found a trooper, but I found an earlier trooper, and I found it at this great place where. Uh, oh, those classic. Uh, yeah. Yes, where Drew. Yeah. The Peugeot. Uh, this is an earlier oh, one. Many photos. So it's many photos. Many. Wow. It's it looks like it's in great condition. I think it's yeah. more than 118,000 miles. Not bad. It's a, and it's a manual. Oh, that's wow. rare. I kind of want this car. Call him up. Is a manual is good? Put it on a truck. The Isuzu, didn't all the Isuzus have like notoriously bad transmissions, automatic transmissions? Oh, I don't know. Did they have I trouble? About, with maybe cars? that was the rodeo. I feel like I heard that about rodeos. I don't know if it applies to the trooper. But it's, a manual. It's a rodeo, isn't that? Was that a Honda powertrain though? The rodeo. Yeah, rodeo is a Honda. Are the seats oh, purple? The, rodeo, the passport was the rodeo. No, no, no. The rodeo has this engine. It's got the three yeah, it's, it's, it's single overhead cam. This one has the dual overhead cam, but the earlier ones didn't make the 215 that Casey's did. These made 190 with the dual overhead cam and 170 or 175 with the single overhead cam. This is the dual overhead cam, though. <laughs> kind of see right there. The dual overhead cam on the intake. But this one looks pretty clean. And it's a manual. And yeah. yeah I mean, no, right cool. now, I love four seat. I love four seat manual convertibles for some dumb reason. And I've never owned an SUV, but I'm tempted by these troopers. And the manual makes it kind of cool. I love the way the trooper looks. They're super well built. Never, you have never owned an SUV? No. He's no. never owned an automatic either. Wow. <laughs> I know. I think you might wanna I think you might want to hold on to that streak. Let someone else buy that for you and just borrow it. I That'd be that's... cool. I'd be totally into that. <laughs> How All much right. is the price on this one, Tony? Uh, 5500 So I'm thinking you could, I'm a little over budget, uh, but you could negotiate, hopefully. Oh, it's only got 120 on it. Yeah, this is a great. That's a good buy. That'd be a good a buy. It's a great buy. And the, underneath, it looks pretty clean. I mean, it's out on the East Coast, but, you know, underneath, I don't see any obvious rust. It looks like it's got some. I think rust. River Classic buys stuff up from all over the place. Yeah, so me too. I do from the Northeast. Well, I mean, they, they didn't like light this the best, but I mean, look, it's, you know, yeah. it doesn't look. Good. Obviously <laughs> rusty. I would, I would totally buy this. Call them up. All right. Uh, that would mean Tony would have to get on a plane, and that's not happening right now. I just have them put it on a truck for you. No, I would have, I would have, I, if I'd still been in Michigan like I was last year, I would have, um, I would have bought that Rocky that was in Chicago. Through. That would have been a good orphan. I think it's still for sale. <laughs> <laughs> of course it is. All right. Uh, Can you pull it up real quick. So now we have gotten to the part of the episode where we go through the verdict. Can you guys see the verdict screen? Yep. Yeah. All right. Uh, so who went first? Joey, you went first. Which of your cars are you putting up? I'm going to put up that Sterling. <laughs> it's pretty bad. <laughs> Jonathan, how are you voting? <laughs> Man, I hate to do this, but. <laughs> There's a reason why Sterling is an orphan. Casey? <laughs> I mean, that's true for all these cars, isn't it? Sure. Yeah. Casey's giving it. Yeah, a I'm, yeah, I'm, that's a, yeah, that's Sorry, a, that's a thumbs down for me, too. <laughs> I don't think Joey, I'm fine to get a thumbs up, so I'm fine with that. Of the, um, I would have given it a thumbs up or a half a thumbs up if it was, uh, if it was the manual one, the manual fastback. Yeah, well, that one sold already, so too bad. <laughs> All right, what was what was your favorite of the day, Joey? Mm. <laughs> They're all pretty bad. That's the right response. They're all That's the right bad. response to today. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> you wanna you want a lifeline, Joey? You wanna call a friend? I don't remember all of them even. They're kind of blurring together. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, Jonathan, you went next. Which of uh, are you putting up that Saturn, or are you? Putting well, I don't. I look, I'm only. I'm only not nominating the Triumph because I don't want to risk my baby to uh, the the Philistines <laughs> who might not give it a thumbs up. <laughs> nominate the Saturn. Yes. I would give you the Saturn thumbs up only because it's six hundred dollars. Right. Uh, yeah. Okay. I'll give you half. You're yeah, right. You. I'll give you half. Six hundred fifty bucks. Yeah. I mean. Half. You could go hit garbage cans with that, Tony. You'd love doing that. Yeah, that's true. 
<laughs> and Jonathan, what of the other cars that were selected, what did you like? Um, uh, man, I, totally unexpected. I got to go with uh, that trooper you already found. <laughs> that, <laughs> only because I, I broke the seal on a Suzu. I feel like that'd be insider trading. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm going to go with uh, Drew Saab. Which is oh, dangerous. yeah, Drew Saab. Yeah, that's a good show. Yeah. Drew Saab is great. It's too, it's too uh, mainstream. I thought we were going for obscure. So we were just going for anything you'd want. There were no rules. You didn't hit the mark on that. All right. Uh, Casey, what are you putting what up? What mark? Obscurity is the mark? The mark was vague. It's okay. Okay. <laughs> uh, I, my, I mean, my, I, it's the trooper for me because that's one I'd actually buy. Yeah. So. And, you uh, have a half because I like my trooper better. Uh, I do. I like do uh, yeah, I do like your trooper better too. We're both good. Um, and then but I do like, like, but it was, but it was definitely Drew Saab. That one, that's my, that's my other favorite. Can you guys? I almost, I had that, I had that car, um, queued up, and then I, the abundance of Saab nine threes that you can get is pretty, is pretty yeah. wild. Mr. Dorian, it sounds like your Saab is awfully popular. You can probably get some thumbs up with that, or you can gamble. <laughs> or you can go behind door yeah. number two or door number three. No, let's let's see some thumbs for that sob. All right, yeah. Oh wait, I just changed my mind. My favorite of the day is the Plymouth Colt Vista. <laughs> <laughs> um, my favorite of the day, I think, is Tony's Trooper. Yeah, thank you, Drew. All right, I'm gonna put up uh, my Trooper, and I th hopefully you guys will give it a thumbs up. Nobody liked my Renault, even though I think it's charming. I like the Renault. I'm giving you a half only because I think you were copying me. I didn't know that you had that. <laughs> no, Tony, no, Tony's right. over budget no. and Casey isn't. That's over true. Budget. Jonathan, I'm almost, I'm almost a Saturn over budget. But hey. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So I got to go. My favorite, I kind of liked uh, Casey's uh, 300ZX, even though it's probably a Nissan and not a Datsun. Well, come on. No, I'm kind of torn between that and the Saab. I really like the Saab. And the Saab seems like a steal at 3900 So mm -hmm. I, I'd say I, I think I'll have you know, my Triumph is faster than that Nissan Datsun 300ZX. Faster. I don't think that one's faster than anything right now. <laughs> but <laughs> maybe a good example. It's, we it's are. so light. It, half of it's rusted away. Oh, yeah, so yeah, we're, yeah. We are talking sort of plat a platonic form of Triumph versus the other zx and that that cam tail had like speed holes in it too <laughs> dan gurney put them there yes <laughs> <laughs> all right uh, i think that takes us to the end of this episode thanks guys and um wait a minute wait i, I did want to say one thing yeah before go we take off i don't know if this is for anyone else this episode taught me that car prices are outrageous i tried to find a Pontiac G8, there's nothing under five grand. Um, a bar, like garbage cars cost crazy money. And I don't- Well, G8s are rare and they're still pretty new. I looked for G8s for a different episode and I couldn't find anything inexpensive. I think yeah. a lot of the rarity affects the price. Yeah. That's why I found one, I, like, I, I found one GTO that was like, Yeah. it, was, it, might, it might've been like 5,400 bucks. But it was an, but it was an automatic, and then I was like, nah, no. But then I was like, no, no, I gotta find that one again. So that's why there was the random fifteen thousand dollars GTO because I clicked on the wrong picture. Yeah, and the but, G8, uh, even with the V6, the G8 was a good car. Yeah, yeah. but I mean, G, G6s are th are thirteen twenty grand. Well, that's the front wheel what drive is garbage. Yeah. What is that? Do you know they launched that car? Yeah, Tony terrible. Tony went on the launch of that car, I think, and they didn't they launch it at the. Uh, that it wasn't MRC like brand new. Yeah, we drove it at MRC and then we drove it around and I drove it around with Bob Lutz riding shotgun and he was talking about how quiet it was. And I was like, it's not quiet at all. <laughs> it was like the 3400 V6, it was awful. All right, uh, well, we should probably wrap this up. Uh, thanks guys, thanks for joining us and um, hope you enjoyed it. We'll see you next week. Bye. See ya.